UT Design is an excellent resource for Dallas area companies because there's a, a group of highly motivated, very well educated uh, seniors that are excited to make an impact and they, you can present problems that they can work hard to try to solve and in our experience uh, this has paid off very well. We've had some uh, excellent results based on their work and we think that's going to make an impact on what we're doing. I've been, I've been real pleased with the solutions that UT Design um, teams have come up with us. They've, it's, it's, they really bring a unique um, vantage point to the problems that we're having them look at. And so they look at things, they, they haven't seen a lot of the stuff that we've um, asked them to look at. And so they bring a, a lot of new uh, um, viewpoints to the problems that they've been presented with. The students that we've worked with have been a great group of kids, uh, highly motivated, uh, sometimes uh, naive from the point of view of, oh, this is going to be a simple problem. Uh, and and uh, I think it's been sort of gratifying to see them grow in terms of, of looking at the complexity of the problems that they're trying to solve. Uh, so I've enjoyed very much the interaction we've had with them. Uh, uh, they're motivated and, and fun to work with. The latest uh, project that um, our team worked with was, the problem was develop a celestial compass, which is basically a, um, finding a way to determine your direction without using a magnetic base type uh, compass. Basically the project uh, came about because using a compass in an area where there's a lot of magnetic flux, a lot of magnetic change, for example around a tank that's magnetically shielded or in areas where maybe it's not clear which way is true north according to our magnetic pole and earth, it's a little crooked, um, the idea was to develop a compass that was more accurate than just that. Um, a magnetic compass can typically have an error of plus or minus 10 degrees, which is quite a bit. And so we were looking for ways to use the stars to find direction. The main solution that we found had to do with creating a reference image and then taking an image through like a Canon Rebel camera and comparing the two and seeing where the best match happened. What we could find, it was finding very, very close matches. And uh, as, far as, as far as the azimuth or degrees from north, uh, as far as altitude goes, in, in terms of angle, that was another issue that was, that was addressed by the project. And we were able to get within, I think, 0.4 degrees on that, um, which is a pretty, pretty accurate system. So we were very happy about that. We basically used uh, an algorithm called the Groth algorithm. Um, we modified it slightly to make it work uh, better with stars, but uh, we take a series of triangles and we have uh, basically the three points. We have uh, three sides and three angles. We calculate the lengths of the sides and the uh, angles and find, uh, basically compare that set of triangles to the triangles in the reference image. And the one that has the best match um, proportionality wise is going to be the best match image. One of the interesting things about the algorithm that was written for the triangles is where the, uh, the inspiration came from. Tom actually found this algorithm uh, that was used for whale sharks and the spots on a whale sharks. And they use it for underwater uh, detection for uh, matching for uh, whale sharks to, to determine if the whale shark's been tagged or not. So they can sp take a, the image of their spots and they, they can draw these triangles using their spots and come up with a matching for the whale sharks so they can track the, the movement of the whale sharks. It was definitely, you know, you solve one problem and then three more crop up. It was the classic, it was the classic hydra. That's really what it was of a problem. You, you chop off one head and three more grow in its place. And we finally, finally started getting near the end, near the, near the end of our second semester. But I guess I, I really enjoy that process. To me, that is what engineering is. It's solving one problem to create more. And uh, it's, it's a joyous thing, really, if you, if you think about it, because you know, each problem you solve, you're satisfied that you solved it. And then you have three more opportunities to solve further problems. It's almost like a drug in a weird way. I would highly encourage any Dallas area uh, company, and in fact, area, uh, companies that may be even a little bit outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area to seriously consider uh, UT design. Uh, this is, has an opportunity to, amongst other things, uh, get the value of the project itself, but learn more about the research that's going on at uh, UT. UT 
Dallas is a spectacular resource for getting research done and I think uh, looking at what can be done in UT design is a, an, a window into some of the marvelous things that are going on at, at UT Dallas. So I would encourage you to get involved not only for the benefit of UT design but just to get to know UT Dallas better because uh, a lot of excellent research and uh, a very different attitude from most major universities in terms of working with industry. Uh, uh, President Daniel and Dean Spong have done an excellent job of making this a very industry friendly place and if you don't know UT Dallas you really ought to seriously consider getting involved.